In? Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to go with me to look at the book of Hebrews tonight. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I want to talk about faith for a few minutes. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. As I was studying this this afternoon, and the 11th chapter of Hebrews is a... It's one of those chapters that, you know, you can get over to the Old Testament and get in with the begats and the all of that and some of the names you can't pronounce and it's kind of hard to concentrate. But whenever you get into chapters like Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it's kind of hard to stop because it uh, it is so so, many, so much right there in that chapter. So many people that it talks about in the Old Testament. And it deals with faith, something that is the most important, the most important element with, of your relationship with the Lord tonight is your faith. And we'll find out here in this chapter exactly why. I've heard people say over the years, you know, some people say, well, I don't have any faith. Well, that's not true. We all have faith. Amen. Amen. Everyone has faith. The Bible says in Romans, the 12th chapter, that God has given every man a measure of faith. Amen. So all of us have faith to some degree. That's not the question, Brother Tyler. The question is, is where are we putting that faith? <coughs> Amen? What exactly are we trusting in? Sister Amy goes to work every day. And I, when I say every day, I mean every day with her. Amen? But she works 50, 60 hours, however many a week, because she has faith that she's going to get paid whenever it gets payday. How many people would go and work long shifts and every day, I don't know if I'm going to get paid or not, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Not very many people, amen? But she has faith that she's going to get paid. That's why people go to work, because they believe they're going to get a paycheck. Amen? People that go to school have faith they're going to graduate, unless your grades was like mine, and then you doubt it all the way through. Amen? But you think you're going to make something of yourself, and you one day you're going to get a diploma. Amen? So we put our faith in a lot of things. People play the lottery because they think at least there's a morsel of faith there that they're going to win something. Amen? Otherwise, they would take their money and flush it down the commode, which is basically what they're doing anyway. Amen? But uh, they would take their money and tear it up and throw it aside. But they believe somewhere within them, I might just hit it big. Amen? And it surprises me to see so many Christians endorsing that kind of stuff today. Even see some of them... Uh, endorsing a petition to sign to bring casinos and to get it to where we can have casinos and gambling boats and things in Kentucky. And I told them that if they think that that's going to help our state, they are a special kind of stupid is all I've got to say about it. Amen? Hallelujah, because the only thing that does is breed corruption and line the pockets of those that are behind the scenes of it all. Amen? Hallelujah. And the poor gets poorer and the rich get richer. Amen? Hallelujah. But we're talking about faith in the book of Hebrews, particularly the 11th chapter of Hebrews, if you want to understand faith a little bit more and what it means to our relationship with the Lord, this is a good place for you to start. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. How many people would like to obtain a good report from the Lord? Amen. Amen. How many people, whenever you went to school, you dreaded report card day? <laughs> Amen? Or maybe you looked forward to it if you were a straight-A student. But you were going to get a report card, and you were going to get one because of your merit, what you had done. God's report card works a little bit different than that. Amen? Are you thankful for that tonight? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It works a little bit different because we don't get what we deserve. We get what His grace affords to us. Amen? Amen. And... The elders, talking about the ones from the Old Testament, obtained a good report. Why? Through faith. Amen? They obtained it by faith. We say so many times that we're under two di different dispensations. The dispensation of grace and the dispensation of law that used to be, and now the dispensation of grace that we have today. But in reality, God's grace has always been in place. Abraham was saved by faith. The same way that you're saved today. Except Abraham's faith was looking forward to that which was going to happen. Our faith today looks back at that which has already happened. 
the finished work of the cross of Calvary. Abraham looked forward, and all the other saints of the Old Testament looked forward to that which was to come, and that's where they put their faith. So they were saved by faith just like we are saved by faith. The Bible says in the third verse, it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The very first example it uses here in the 11th chapter, which many people call the Hall of Faith, is in verse 4 when it speaks of Abel. And it says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. Now let's stop for a moment and think about the difference between the sacrifices that we read over the book of Genesis between Abel and his brother. Abel brings to the Lord and offers on the altar a blood sacrifice. And it pleases the Lord and the Lord accepts it. Cain, like many of us today, had a problem. He brings what? The work of his hands. He brings that which he has produced. That which he has cultivated. That which he has grown. That which he has nurtured. And he brings his work and lays it on the altar. And God rejects that. Why? Because God from the very beginning, from the book of Genesis, whenever Adam and Eve fell, and he made for them coats of animal skins, sin always required death, and sin always required a blood offering. And Abel offers the right offering, which is an example of that which Jesus would do on the cross of Calvary. So we see here how that Abel, even way back then, all the years before Jesus would even be born in the stable in Bethlehem and would grow up to be the man that he was and lay down his life for the sacrifice of the world, we see that Abel presents us a picture of the cross of Calvary and the shed blood of Jesus Christ and his faith being in that. We see Paul trying to explain to us how that the elders obtained a good report through faith. Though they hadn't received the promise, they looked ahead toward the promise that God had promised them. And they put their faith in that. The Bible says, if we go on down verse 5, it says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in the Old Testament that Enoch walked with God and Enoch was not. It says, because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Now how did he please God? It's getting ready to tell us. But many times today we think that we can please God with our works. Not that good works are bad. Good works are good. But good works do not justify us. Good works do not save us. The Bible says it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Some days we get up and we feel more spiritual than we do others. Amen. At the end of the day, maybe we feel better about ourselves because we didn't get mad. We didn't throw a hissy fit. We didn't say something we shouldn't have said. We didn't do something that we should not have done. We can look back on our day and think that we really seemed much holier that day. Amen? So we feel good. Amen. It makes our flesh feel good. But it doesn't make us any more saved or any less saved. If I had a bad day yesterday and I had a good day today, I'm just as saved today as I was yesterday. I'm just as saved yesterday as I was today. Amen? Amen? Because my salvation does not depend on how good I am, Brother Tommy. Amen? It's, no man is justified by works. We are all justified by faith. This says that Enoch pleased God. And how did he please God? The sixth verse tells us, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently, I'll get it out in a minute, diligently seek Him. Amen? There's only one way to please God today, and that is through faith. Faith in what? Faith in our works? The Bible, the Bible is plain. 
That, that, does not, that is not the kind of faith that God's talking about. Faith in denominationalism or religion. No, that they're just get you let down and disappointed. The only object of faith that has ever been presented all the way through the Old Testament, before the cross, all the way through the New Testament, after the cross, has been one thing. And that is the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. He shed blood for the atonement of the sin of mankind. That is the only object of faith that God accepts. If you have your faith in your religion, that is not acceptable to God. You're sacrificing at the altar of Cain. If you have your faith in your works, if I can just be good enough today, if I can feed enough of the hungry, if I can clothe enough people, if I can, if I can do enough good deeds, if I can do enough penance, I can make myself holy. There's not but one way to be holy tonight. There's not but one way to be justified tonight. There's not but one way to be saved tonight. And that is through the shed blood of the Lamb of God that died on Calvary's cross. Listen, when He said it was finished, He meant what He said and He said what He meant. You cannot add to or take away the finished work of salvation that Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. You can try to live right, and that's great. We should try to live right. But it doesn't make us more saved. It cannot save us. I like what Brother Hinton used to say. I don't live right to save me. I live right because I'm saved. Amen? When you, when you really get born again, living right will be a fruit of the experience that you've had with God. You will not walk the same way. You will not talk the same way. But we get the, the cart before the horse because we think in order to be saved, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, and I've got to do this. No, when you get saved, then you will begin to do this, and this, and this. We are saved unto good works. Good works does not save us. And Paul is teaching us here that faith is the only way to please God. And the Bible makes it very plain, and I'll give you a few scriptures here in a minute. I'm not going to keep you very long, but I'll give you a few scriptures here in a minute that make it very plain what kind of faith that Paul is talking about. Let's read about a couple more of these in uh, Hebrews 11. Verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Never reigned before. Noah's building a boat. Why? Faith. Faith. God's Word said it. Noah obeyed it. And he built the boat. Never had rain. But because of his faith in God. Because of his faith in God. God gave him the instruction. He followed the instruction, Brother Isaac. And he built the ark. Amen. And he and his family were saved because of faith. Through faith. The law did not save them. And I realize that was before the law actually was handed down. But the no regulation, no nothing that, that, that man had made up, but th faith through God alone and dependence upon Him. Listen, you, you, the only way you're going to make it today, the only way I'm going to make it today is by faith. Amen? The Bible says, He that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. The only way we're going to endure today is by faith. Because you're going to get up sometimes in the morning, you know, and you're not going to feel the Spirit of God. And you're still going to have to live for Him whether you feel it or not. If your faith is in the feeling, you ain't going to make it very far. Amen? Because sooner or later, you're going to, be, you're going to feel bad. Amen? Matter of fact, some, most of us feel, feel bad more times than we feel good. Amen? So you, you're going to have to get your mind off of the way you feel because that has nothing to do with it. Whether I feel good or not, God's still on the throne. His Word is still settled in heaven. Amen? And that's where my faith belongs. In Him, not my feeling. Amen. Sooner or later, the shout's not going to be there. You ain't going to feel like jumping over the pew. Amen? You're not going to feel like doing the Pentecostal two-step. Like, like David said in Psalms, the 23rd chapter, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. See, when we can get that, and I've, dri I've drilled that in my old hard head for years, if I can get that, and I've told, there's been times I've told the Lord, Lord, I don't feel you. I don't see anything happening. 
I don't hear you, but I know because of what your word says that you'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. We must put our faith in his word tonight Amen. that he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. We must put our faith in His Word tonight that He that hath begun a good work in us is more than able to finish that. Our faith must be in Him, not ourselves. If your faith is in yourself, you will fail miserably. If your faith is in your denomination, you will fail miserably. If your faith is in the, the, the leader of your denomination or the doctrine of your denomination, you will fail miserably. But if you'll keep your faith in Jesus... If you keep your faith in His Word. And listen, we need this in the hour that we live in. Because there are things being shaken. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says there's coming a time whenever everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Amen. When you turn on the news and you see the violence and you see the shootings at our, at our schoolhouses and in our malls and in our the, the public square and you see all of the bad news and all, like I think it was Mama that talked about, it seemed like there's a darkness, amen, or evil across the land. And that's the truth. There is. And it's easy for people in the day that we live in to get discouraged. Especially if you have your faith in the wrong place. Amen. But if we'll put our faith in Jesus. See, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You might have checked the stock market today and your stock was down. But Jesus was the same. Amen. You may today, you, you may got a bad report from the doctor today, but Jesus is still the same God today that He was yesterday. Amen? You may be to the place where you feel like you can't, you ain't got two dimes to rub together. It seems like that everything that can go wrong is going wrong, but God is still the same God that He was when you were on the mountain. Now that you're in the valley, He's still God. Amen. He's still the same God. And if we can get our faith in that, not in the situation, not in the circumstance, but our faith in our God and His Word and that He will do what He said He will do. Sister Judy may tell me something and she may never do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. For some un un unseen reason, she might promise me something, something might happen, she can't do it. Every one of us have probably told people, I'll do that, and we never did it. But if God told you, I'll do that, you can count on the fact that He will do what He said He will do. Amen? Paul said, I am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. He is more than able to see us through. Amen. Faith in God is the only productive faith that we can have in our relationship with Him. Because when we begin to put our faith in works... Whenever we begin to put our faith in penance, whenever we begin to put our faith in our flesh, we will fail miserably every time. Not just every now and again, but we will fail. Because if you get up, this, if you get up in the morning and you say, well, I've got to live this thing. If I make one mistake, it's, I've, it's, it's over. I'm not saved. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Amen? Amen? All of us are going to make mistakes. All of us are going to fail. Amen. All of us, there, there is no sinless perfection. Amen. Until we leave this old carnal body. But that's what the blood's for. That's what His grace is for. That's why James said that if we sin, if we confess that sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Let's read a little bit more before we close. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, going down to the 8th verse, says, By faith Abraham... Now this, is, this man is called the father of faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed, the Bible says, and he went out. Not knowing whether he went. Here we find another man. And we find the, these examples over and over again in this chapter. Well, we find another man that because God said it, he obeyed God's word. And he stepped out on faith. And he followed after that, which he had no idea where it was at. What it looked like. Didn't know where he was going. But God had said, go, I've got a place for you. Uh -huh. And Abraham put his faith in God. He put his faith in God's Word. It says, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, 
the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Drop down to verse 13. These all died in faith. See, they were saved the same way that you are today. The law did not save them, could not save them then, cannot save you today. They were saved by faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now listen to the way that the Apostle Paul words that. It says they were persuaded of them. They embraced them. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. <clears throat> they were persuaded that the promise was coming. They hadn't seen it, said they saw it afar off. That meaning it was in the future. It's talking about what Jesus would do for mankind. Talking about the promise that would begin with the seed of Abraham. Talking about the promise that Jesus Christ would be the Savior of the world. So really, really, how do you know that he was talking about that? Because John 8, 56, Jesus talking says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. And the Jews said unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. So Abraham saw the promise of God from afar. And he put his faith in that. Those on the other side of the cross put their faith in the cross and the finished work that was to come. That's what the blood sacrifices were all about in the Old Testament tabernacle. You don't have to go any deeper than that to find Jesus. You can find Him in every piece of furniture, in every act that the priest did, but all you have to look to is the blood and you can see Him right there. Yeah. Amen. Every bit of that was a picture. It was not a perfect sacrifice, but it was a picture of the perfect sacrifice that was to come. And that's, where, that's what they put. See, it was not the blood of that lamb there. That little lamb that was spotless. It was not the blood of that lamb. It was the faith in the blood of... It was the faith in the blood of the lamb to come. Amen? So the elders obtained a good report because they looked forward to that which God was going to do. Today, Brother Tyler, the only way you will get a good report is if you look at the finished work of the cross and what Jesus did for us to put our faith in what He did. You're not good enough. You will never be good enough. I'm, I'm sorry if that pops your balloon. Without Jesus, we'll never make it. Amen. Amen. Without His blood, we cannot be righteous. We are either justified or we're not justified. You can't be halfway justified. The Bible says we are justified by faith. By faith in what? By faith in His shed blood. By faith in His finished work on the cross of Calvary. Abraham saw this afar off. He saw it with an eye of faith. He saw it in the promise that in His seed all the nations of the earth should be blessed. He saw it when He was promised that He should have a son which was, which was the beginning of the fulfillment of the promise. He saw it in the birth of His son Isaac. He saw also the day of Christ, the day of a great day of atonement, the day that Jesus would give His life on Calvary. He saw that whenever God said, take your son Isaac, your only son Isaac, take him to the top of the mountain and lay him down and sacrifice him to me. And Abraham, that had to be some kind of hard. Amen. The son he had waited for, the Bible doesn't say anything about him arguing with the Lord. He just starts doing what God told him to do. It says, in Abraham, in Genesis 22 and 6, you don't have to go there, but I'll read it to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Listen what Abraham tells him. 
And Abraham said, Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and he did a, God did exactly what Abraham said he was going to do. Not just that day on that mountain whenever he strapped Isaac down, he bound him to the altar and he pulled back the knife to sacrifice him and God said, Oh, wait a minute. Don't do any harm to the lad. And Abraham looks up and he sees a ram caught in the thicket. Amen? And God, Jehovah Jireh, amen, our provider, oh, hallelujah, provides a sacrifice instead in the place of Isaac, his son, amen? That's exactly what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary, amen? He became our, he went there in our place. Death was sentenced to us, not him, he was God, amen? But it was our death sentence he took. God will provide himself a lamb and God did provide himself in the form of a lamb when he hung between heaven and earth on the cross of Calvary the lamb of God as John the Baptist said that takes away the sin of the world and when we put our faith in that we can be justified when we put our faith in that we can be sanctified when we put our faith in that we can, ex we can experience salvation but that's the only way we can be justified. That's the only way we can be sanctified. That's the only way that we can have a relationship with Him is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So we're all given a measure of faith. No question in that. The question is, is what, what do we have our faith in? And the Bible is very plain. I want to give you these scriptures as I close. The Bible is very plain. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. If you're going to make it, you're going to have to learn to walk by faith. You're going to have to learn to pray, God, I know that you're there because your word says you're there. God, I know I can make it because your word says I can make it. God, I know that even though I failed miserably, I am still justified because I'm asking you to forgive me and wash me all over again in the blood of the Lamb. Romans 1 and 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans 3.28 says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 and 9 says, Much more then, being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Turn to Galatians 2 and 16. This is the last scripture we're going to use. Galatians, the second chapter, the 16th verse. Talking about faith tonight. Where we have our faith makes all the difference in the world. Many people have fallen and just completely fell away from God because they had their faith in their own ability and they failed themselves. They had their faith in their pastor and their pastor failed. They had their faith in other Christians. I saw someone post today on Facebook that it's something about... It's, it's bad whenever people do you wrong, but it's even worse when they're Christians. I've got news for you. Christians are human. Amen. Yeah. Not perfect. People say, well, I wouldn't go down at that church because they're full of hypocrites. Well, come on, one more hypocrite ain't going to hurt nothing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All of us fail. All of us make mistakes. That's what Amen. forgiveness is all about. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what forgiveness is all about. To forgive one another, love one another. Galatians 2 and 16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even when we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Today we are justified by faith. 
Not faith in works. Not faith in religion. Not faith in a, in a denomination. Not faith in man. But faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Faith in His finished work. Faith in His Word that points toward His finished work. Amen. Faith in His strength, His glory, His righteousness, and not our own. That's where our victory is found today. Amen. They used to sing the old song, Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He washed me. I don't know. <clears throat> but victory in Jesus is what we need to realize. Not victory in our denomination, our doctrine, other than the doctrine of the cross, His, His finished work, His shed blood. So if you find yourself and you feel like you just don't have the victory and you don't feel like you're going any farther, maybe it would help if you inspected where your faith's at. Because as long as our faith is in Him, we can have the victory. Amen. I ain't talking about being on the mountain. I ain't talking about being in the valley. That has nothing to do with having the victory. Amen. Amen. Nothing to do with having the victory. Having our faith in Him, knowing that He's already done it. We just have to follow Him. He's already made the way. We just have to follow Him. He's already made the sacrifice. We just have to put our faith in that sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Putting our faith where it belongs. In Jesus and His finished work. Someone else tonight have something before we go. Brother Isaac's got a scripture he wants to read.